we are kicking around the idea of potentially building again. Explain to me why we didn't get central vacuum. Lasers! New video. We have been in our house for one year. Leslie, I think it's time to do an update video. We made 40 YouTube videos on it, and we brought you guys along for the process. Tons of people want to know what things would we change, what things do we like, did we go over budget, and do we plan to move? And do we also, still like our builder? Yeah, do we like our builder? Today's video is sponsored by Dyson. So yeah, welcome back to our home after a year, and uh, let's show you what things we love, what things we don't love. So the first question is, do we still love our home? And the answer is a big, huge yes. Yeah, I still love the home, and I think I love it more than when we first got into it. One of the things that I'm surprised by is the view. I really like the view. We bought in kind of like a low land area, but if you look at our backyard, it's super pretty. Of course, we have like the wall of windows, which was a very good decision. And when you open them up, or even when they're closed, you have a beautiful view of this mountain called Pine Valley Mountain. You have these trees right behind me. Let's step into the sun. There we go. We have sunshine that's never going directly into our house. We have the pool back here. So the view is amazing. And then what's also cool about it is that at nighttime, it's incredibly silent. During the daytime, we have excavators running over here. Our next door neighbors have been working on their house for over a year and it's just like, you hear the pounding, you hear the stucco. The ones in front of us have been working on their house for about a year also. And like they're, they have their music playing. So during the daytime, it's kind of madness out here. I can hear it on every single speaker and the bass sounds really good. People always ask me, what is my favorite room in the home? And I always say the studio. And people are surprised because obviously I don't work in the studio. I'm hardly ever out there, but it's the entire reason why we built this home is so that Dan and Lincoln can have a space to do what they need to do. So that's, that's really nice that you like the studio because my favorite room is the master bathroom, but it's actually the shower. I love the shower. It's massive and it's so comfortable. And then she likes the studio. Seems like it should be flipped around a little bit, but okay, she likes the studio. Well, I do like the studio too. It is really nice to be able to work from home, especially with this last year. A lot of people have been working from home and we haven't been traveling as much. And so for me to be able to just go into my little office or come back in and get some food, it's so helpful. We decided to buy this lot a little closer to town, which is really, really helpful. The schools are great. Restaurants and shopping and everything is really close by. It really does feel like it's our home. And for a home to feel like a home, it needs to be someplace that's happy, where everybody has their rooms, their space. It's organized and it just feels happy. Like when I do travel and I come back, I walk in and I smell the house and I'm like, ah, it just feels like home. When we built our home, the thing that was the scariest was it's gonna cost a lot of money. We're getting a loan from the bank, yes, and financially we're putting enough down that it's not putting us in a dangerous financial situation, but still, we've never built our home before. And so one of the big questions is always, like, did you stay under budget? Did you hit your budget? Like, I was terrified looking at the budget going, I don't know, is the lumber gonna cost more? Is concrete gonna cost more? Are other things gonna cost us more? Did we go over budget? The answer is yes but it's also no. Let me bring you in behind the scenes and show you what things we spent more on, what things we spent less on, and how we made the decisions. There are a few things in this house that I really wanted that we ended up just cutting out. This is, on the other side of this, is the roof tiles and solar panels right there. But if we would have done the spray foam insulation, we would have had like six inches of just like, almost like styrofoam right here, where they spray it all on there. It expands and fills in the cracks and it creates this like cocoon around your entire house. It becomes much more energy efficient, but it does cost more to do it. I just decided that we needed some of that money for other things. In hindsight, I kind of regret the decision. It would have been worth it to pay the money. Over the long term, over the next five to 10 years, we would have saved a lot more money on our energy bill by having the house more efficient. So now we're gonna pay for it for the years to come. Initially, my inspiration board had a ton of photos of this being completely filled with glass, like a glass wall, and it had a door right here. And it was similar, it kind of mimicked our front doors with the paneling. I, I was really more. sad about it I at first because I really wanted it and it was really pretty. It was pretty. It had a more of a like a modern feel to it and it cost eight grand. What did we spend eight thousand dollars on? A few things. Another area that we cut cost, Leslie, is we didn't get central vac. Explain to me why we didn't get central vacuum. 
I went through the budget when we first got it and I was like, where are some areas we can cut out? And I've never really used the central vac. Like Dan gets super bugged by the hoses that go everywhere. Yes. Our builder and many other people are like, come on, these are this is a nice custom home. You have to have central vacuum. Which I'm sure for some people, they love central vacuum. We had it in our other house where we started our YouTube channel. We had central vacuum. We rarely ever use the thing. And like Leslie said, it was a pain for me to get all the cables and the snake thing and drag it all around the house. It was a thousand dollars just to get it like wire it for it and then a couple extra thousand dollars to actually put in the system. So that's thousands of dollars we could apply to something else. So instead we've just used a normal vacuum. If you remember we did a sponsored video with Dyson a few years ago and we got this vacuum. The Dyson Cyclone version 10. This is the vacuum that we've been using since we did that sponsored video. I'll put the date on here right now. This worked really well for our last house, but our last house is a lot smaller. Our house is how big? 7,800 square feet with the studio. 8,800 square feet. That is a lot of space for one little vacuum. Check out the bucket right now. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, but this is <laughs> just- so clean. This is just from like one day of vacuuming all of this stuff inside of here. But overall, getting rid of central vac was such a good decision because this vacuum has held up so well. As much as I've loved this vacuum that we've had for years, Dyson decided to sponsor this video and hook us up with the brand new Dyson V15 Detect. And this vacuum, while it looks pretty similar to our old one, has some incredible features that I'm really pumped about. First of all, lasers. <laughs> There's lasers inside of the vacuum. Have you ever had a vacuum with lasers? It lights up the dust that you normally don't see because it just kind of blends in. Look how clean it is. The laser is shining at the perfect angle. When we cut our first Dyson and we could see through and see how much stuff we were actually picking up, it was quite shocking to go, oh my gosh, how was that much stuff on the floor? But on the Dyson V15, it actually adds scientific proof to tell you a little bit more of the story about what's inside of your garbage bin. There is an LCD screen right here on the top that displays your runtime that you have left, which let me tell you is super helpful instead of just your vacuum just like all of a sudden just stopping. And you're like, oh, I wanted to finish this room. But if you know how much time you have left, you know how many rooms you can do. It will show you your runtime and then you see all these numbers that are into the millions right here and how many particles we actually picked up. So what I learned is that there's a sensor inside of here that tracks the flow of all of the dirt particles, the super small micro particles to the much bigger particles or fabrics that come up. And then it'll rev up the suction power and give you more power for the bigger pieces. Super smart, who would have thought? We have a really smart home. I didn't think we'd have such a smart vacuum to go with it. This is the high torque cleaning head and this one's pretty awesome. This is for carpet and it also has these detangling things. It will take all of the hair and it'll go through and cut it and then pull the hair particles up into the bin. That's pretty fancy. Instead of having just hair all over, you have to take a knife and cut that. Have you ever done that? That's what done? I have to do. It's yes. the worst. So this one has a very strange name, Dyson. The Slim Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the coolest of all of them because the thing I like about this is I showed you earlier, it does have a laser right here in this section so that when you do turn it on, a lot of people have always had lights on their vacuum and they're like, yay, I've got a light and it shows me all the dust particles, but that is up higher. It's not angled the proper way. This is angled perfectly at the right angle. So it doesn't really show the floor as much. It just shows the angle of the dust. It does easily transform into a handheld. This one's called the anti-tangle screw because it's on an angle and it pushes it all down one way and after it breaks it, it sucks it back up into here and goes up into there. So this is really helpful for a car. I feel like some kind of chimney sweep from England or something in the old days, but instead I've got this fancy tech. Check out the Dyson V15 Detect on Dyson.com or you can click on the link in the description. Thank you to Dyson for sponsoring this video. Now the fun question, when we built this house a year ago, what did we spend over budget and was it worth it? So I guess it's two questions. So first of all, one of the things we didn't have on our original plans that we ended up getting was right in the backyard, a slide. Dan really, really wanted this slide and I it really was did. pretty costly. And I went back and forth. I'm like, we don't need a slide. We have a swimming pool. They can jump off the side and that's good enough. And I was completely wrong because they loved the slide. It was so worth it to do it. You, you yes. Right. How much was the slide? 20,000. 
$20,000 for a slide. That's awful. It's embarrassing to say, but it's so much fun. <laughs> it is fun. <laughs> and you know what? Some of these things with this house, I feel like for resale value, we're gonna get it back. Bless, Bless you. you, dog. Wow. Another area we went over in is lighting and flooring. How do we not plan in flooring and lights to our house? Well, we planned it, but we upgraded. So we had like porcelain tiles throughout the bathrooms and we decided to do marble throughout I do all of like them. the marble floors. Super it's fancy. Pretty. It's so pretty and it just like, oh. We chose the herringbone wood flooring, which costs more to install. Herringbone it, is this. Yes. <laughs> Instead of just putting your boards like this, you have them on the angles, the cute little angles. It's a very like French style application and not very many homes do it. We barely have any carpet inside of our house. Yeah. It's just like the marble and then the wood floors. When you look at how tall our ceilings are, we needed really large kind of, you know, chandeliers and those sorts of things to fill the space. And lighting's just beautiful. It can completely change a room, so I spent a good amount on that. And I love every single light. We also have one that we didn't want, and it was our <laughs> builder's wife, Susan. She's an interior designer. And she put inside the laundry room oh, this so incredibly over-the-top over chandelier. I saw this and I was just like, we cannot have that. It's the laundry yeah. room. I have this little tiny smile that comes over my face when I see the marble on the ground and I see that chandelier. Yeah, it's still there. So we still have it. So Susan, um, you're right. we're gonna keep it. So I know you're waiting for us to return it, but it's Never. staying. I don't even know if this counts within the budget, but we did get solar in the last couple of months. And so it is within the first year we put solar on the roof. Maybe we wouldn't have needed as much solar if we would have had better insulation, but it, this is a larger home. It's basically like a commercial building because we do have our office here also. We have four electric cars that we're charging. We live in a place that very rarely ever rains and it very rarely is cloudy. Like right now I'm looking out, there's one little tiny cloud over the mountain. The rest of it is just blue sky. So if you do the math, we're gonna do a full breakdown video of this, but I think within 10 years, we'll be able to pay off the entire solar. Another thing that was unplanned that cost us $40,000, that's a lot over budget, it is the golf simulator. Was it worth the 40,000? Yes, I love the golf simulator. It's probably my favorite room inside the house. Really? How do often do you think you use it? Um, if there's tournaments going on, or if it's bad weather, I use it a ton. A lot of his friends are golfers also, and then they all come over and like play games yeah, and just games like hang out. Courses. Yeah, it's really fun. Okay. I like it a lot. Two thumbs up for Lincoln, that was worth the money. And uh, the speakers, you know we went crazy on speakers. This is a $5,000 subwoofer that is super heavy. We dropped it onto a Tesla. There's a 12 inch speaker on this side and on this side. We have lots of speakers in the backyard all around the house. And it is definitely something that I love and I'm grateful that we upgraded on that. We spent a lot of extra money on the pavers instead of just doing concrete like we were planning on doing right here. It did cost a few thousand dollars extra but does add really nicely to the aesthetic of this side of the house. It looks beautiful. This isn't for everybody in every home, but for a custom home like this in the neighborhood that it's in, I do think this will add to the resale value. And I love that it doesn't crack too. I've heard horror stories of people building houses and at the end, they hate their builders. Did we end on good terms with our builders? We ended on great terms. They've become some of our very best friends. We go on vacations with them. We're so lucky. Do they think the same thing about us? Hey. Hey. Hi. What's up? Good, you're on video right now to the world. <laughs> you don't look like you're working today. No, oh, I just came home to shower. I haven't even been home to shower yet. <laughs> See, look, we got the camera filming you right now. And we're screen recording this. Okay, so we got a quick question for you. Okay. Um, after building with us, do you hate working with us? No, I love working with you guys. <laughs> Good answer. Did we pay you to say that? <laughs> nope. There's confirmation, our builder still likes us. So. Out, of, out of all of your other people, are we your favorites? You don't have to answer, you have to answer, answer that. that. No, yes. that's a loaded question. That's a loaded question. I knew it. <laughs> the last question is, are we here to stay or are we moving? Are we moving? Big surprise time? I mean, not right now, we're not moving. We might be thinking about it. So overall, we love this home. We're super grateful for it. We can't believe that we're fortunate enough to live here and we have loved sharing it with you guys. And I hope that it doesn't come off as we're trying to brag or boast and say, look how much money we have, we're buying this thing. We're letting you into our lives. We would be building this thing no matter what, whether we were filming it on YouTube or not. I've been a YouTuber for years now and a lot of being a YouTuber has helped pay for this beautiful home. And so one of the questions though is, are we going to stay here forever? This 
last week, we found a lot that is not far from here. So it has the same schools, it's the same size. We could build the exact same house with a few modifications, like maybe get that spray foam, <laughs> maybe do a few things that would be better. And there's a few reasons why we're actually considering it. While we love our neighborhood and we love where we live, this other lot that's the same size is on one street. There's only eight houses on the street and it has a gate, so it's Which gated. It's huge. Like that's, it's, it's nice to have that extra security. I it think. is. Like, we live on a street that's really busy. People are always driving by. They're doing construction. They're just driving by looking at our house. And sometimes we do get people that come to our house and knock on the door. And as much as I love you guys, it's really uncomfortable because we don't know when it's safe or not safe when somebody knocks on our door. And so we'd rather not even answer it. You can also say we did it to ourselves by showing the videos to the world, and that's fair too. But it could be nice in this new lot to be able to have a gate on the street. And the great thing is, Jonathan, who you just saw, he's the one in charge of the entire street of who gets to move there. And they're thinking about moving there. And if they moved there, they could hand pick their neighbors and the eight people that we lived by on our private street would be really cool people. So yeah, that would be crazy if we actually moved and went somewhere else, but I don't think it's as likely. We love the house that we're in and thank you guys for watching all of our videos about our house updates. It's been fun sharing this and for us to be able to go back and watch the videos and see the process, but then also to share with you guys because you guys are a big part of our lives and all that we do. I'm curious to know your comments. Did we make good decisions on some of the things that we cut out, that we put in, and what other questions do you have? I think it would be good to do another Q&A based off of some of the questions that you put in the comments below. So let us know what you guys think. Um, thanks a ton for watching and thank you to Dyson for sponsoring this video. So, so do you like your builder still? I love my builder. <laughs> Slim Fluffy for the win. Maybe not for the name, but for the use of it. It's so weird that he never turns his truck off. A little sneezer. You're cute. You're super cute. So shiny. Shiny.